Hey everybody, Misha from GGD here, and it's been a while, hasn't it been? It's been it's been a busy little time for me. Hopefully it's been a busy little time for you too. Well, not too busy, right? We don't want that. Now I'm rambling. Anyways, I'm here with a mix walkthrough. We just put out this awesome, and I mean awesome, new library. The Benny Greb Signature Library. We don't have anything quite like this. And this is a full on library. This is not a one kit wonder. So this is a library where you can go in and make your own sound and see, you know, just how versatile this kit is. So obviously we had to do a bunch of demos and the guys asked me to do something a bit more unconventional because obviously like Benny Greb is, is doing the whole jazz fusion thing. We even got some jazzy kit pieces in here. Uh, but Des came to me and was like, hey, what if you do like kind of a, a special defects thing with the idea being that in the spirit of special defects, if you're not familiar with it, Frederick Thorndahl's solo album, uh, the sp special defects, especially version 3.33. Joe, get that up on screen for the guys. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. People think I love Meshuggah and I do, but probably that album's an even bigger influence for me. So I wanted to, I wanted to have some fun. I was like, okay, I could, I could try that style. Like really, really go for that style. Uh, I don't know that it necessarily came out exactly like that, but that was the intent. And uh, Morgan Agron plays drums on that. And he's this, this crazy jazz fusion drummer. And the sounds on that album, like the drum sounds are not really metal, but it became part of that sound. And it was really cool to hear that juxtaposition of like this, jazz drummer, fusion -y drummer, kind of trying to play metal. And that was the, the vibe that I was going for with this. So uh, let me play this demo through and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And if you're a fan of uh, Frederick Thorndahl's special defects, you might see the vibe I was going for with this. go so I figured I could do like a little mix walkthrough a little breakdown because to do this I basically had to build a new mix from scratch and I can kind of talk you through some of my logic and how I approached it you can look at all the plugins everything I'm using on everything and uh, kind of what I was going for I had to do this kind of quickly and also you can see how maybe you'd set up the Benny Greb kit if you're going for more of a metal or fusion metal or that, you know, this kind of context, something a bit more aggressive, which you may not have associated with this kit or realize that you could get that sort of sound out of the kit, but you totally can. And this is this is proof here. Now, part of this is the drum selection, because as I mentioned earlier, we've got some jazzy uh, uh, toms and kicks and snares, right? So you have this jazz tuning here, but we're going for the regular one. And how, how sweet is that? That is, that is just fantastic. This kit was captured so fantastically. So this being a sort of full on kit, not only are there a lot of layers and round robins, but there's just a lot of articulations. If you look at this, at this, the, the mappings page here, you know, it's just, it's just articulations, 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 like everything for something where, the, you know, there's not that many actual pieces here, right? But it's just, you, you have so many different uh, ways to express, like for example, each crash, uh, which may seem a little excessive. And for this demo, I didn't use all the way, but you know, you've got 
each, e even the crash, you got ride, edge tap, bell shoulder, bell tip. So you could get all the little bells and whistles everywhere, right? Uh, for this demo, we didn't really need to use that, but it's kind of cool. So I, I, I had to build a new map, which when you're using Cubase, super handy to have the drum editor. I, I swear by it. It's one of the biggest reasons I use Cubase. If you don't, I don't know exactly how your DAW deals with this. I think like Logic has something where you can approximate something like this. Maybe some of the other DAWs have something like this now, but this is so handy because everything is labeled as you can see. So I've got this, the center hit and here we have the center hits and the rim shot hits separated even into like an, an edge rim shot. So you get that, that kind of jazzy, edgy sound, or sometimes it can sound like sort of a, a, a mishit. If you want to make it sound super realistic, it's like, oh man, this drummer like kind of didn't nail that one rim shot hit. You could throw one of those in there for fun. Um, but, but obviously super expressive. You know, and you could use that center hit. That, that center hit is pretty, pretty powerful, but then obviously the rim hit itself. You know, even going down to the softer rim hits. This, is, this kid is so expressive. This demo is not necessarily the most expressive uh, demo. We've got a, uh, a a side snare, which I'm opting to use with wires off, almost like a left tom, like kind of a dead left tom as part of this first groove here. Let's look at some of the MIDI first, then we can look at some of the mixing. What do you guys say? So to me, like, you know, the special defects always had that... Uh, what would you call it? Six, eight? One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Da, 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 right? Uh, it, it's not all that, but I, I don't know. I just started there. I ended up with this thing that kind of sounds like uh, uh, the exquisite machinery of torture, if you know that, uh, off of Chaos Fear, one of my favorite albums, favorite tracks. Anyways, it's that kind of vibe, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we have the toms sort of filling in the gaps. We're using the dynamics to our advantage here, right? And we've got this seemingly simple but kind of off-kilter um, guitar here, which I actually didn't DI these. I, I think this is just, this is, what is this? Oh yeah, I did something clever. I haven't thought of doing this. It's actually kind of a cool trick. So if I know we're talking about Benny Greb, but if you're, I, I should have been doing this way longer. If you're using Zilla, which I am, so I figured, okay, we're doing, we're doing, you know, mashuga ish you know, special defect stuff. Let's get the Mesa. I've got this super sick Hermanson uh, modded Mesa, which you can't, can't see right now, but that's why I use, I didn't even DI this. I just tracked straight into it. And then for the cabs, I'm actually running both cabs into a group here, right? So this is the group. And then I'm just running the cab there because it's a stereo cab sim. And then here, I'm, I just I just got a combo that I was really happy with. So this way you can actually double try. You can hear as you change the cabs, like if I was to modify this. Yeah, that sounds good right there, but but um, you can hear it how it's affecting it uh, double tracked, which is actually really handy because that's kind of what you want to know. But you usually have to do both sides and then and then listen back. So this gives you instant feedback. So a little aside, but we're gonna be looking at the whole mix. This is gonna be a long video, isn't it? I'm sorry, but um, that's what's going on on the guitars there. Um, and uh, for for the bass, I'm using uh, good buddy Ermin's. Submission audio uh, gin bass. I'm using a combination here. Gin bass and is it Umansky? 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 A little bit of that. So you can get that kind of grid out of that there. Um, and those are binding kind of nicely. That Hermanson is kind of unreal. So like this and that. And that's just kind of looping, and you're getting that sort of polymeter effect. Anyways, I don't need to show you guys how to write music, do I? You guys already know how to do that. So this part's kind of fun here, because I was going, I was going for that kind of like a 
Toto shuffle, like the Rosanna shuffle with this, like, you know, the, you know, way slower, but. You know, but obviously the kicks are matching the pattern, so it works out a little different. And again, we have all these hi-hat articulations. I actually haven't even gone through all of them. Like, this is just sort of what I needed to work with, because A, I don't actually need to put what you're going to use in there. You're going to make your life dip more difficult. If you want the kitchen sink, you can have it in there. But I, 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 did, I barely even used everything that was here. I just wanted to have it available for when I was writing. So you have this tight tip, tight edge, and then the, the, the bell shoulder, all that kind of stuff, closed tip edge. So you could get so much articulation, and that's where you could get these little flourishes. They actually sound very realistic in my opinion. <laughs> For me, like, hi-hats have always been one of those things that's, like, kind of a dead giveaway for, like, program drums or, like, drums that aren't programmed that well or maybe sample libraries that can't, can't keep up with it. The, the hi-hat in this is so good. If I, if I do a Franken-Kit, I'll probably use this hi-hat because I think it's, it's such a good hat. It's so well captured and it's so versatile, right? Uh, and, and we should actually go over the, the kit pieces. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I'm kind of excited because this is a pretty, pretty cool kit. So we also have these 16 inch hats. Have a completely different sound. I might have to EQ those different, um, you know, and these, these, the, this kit like has it has so much range that if you want to get the most of it, you'll probably have to mix it to whatever it is. Like for example, the snare is a great example. This mid snare, I mean, how how fantastic does that sound? That is just amazing. But we've got like uh, a high snare, which is actually really cool. Like, I, I think it's such, like, especially if you're on that kind of Deftones-y or like, I, I don't know. I think it's such a cool sounding snare. Uh, and um, we got this low snare. Which I actually did another demo with, which I may break down. And I kind of based the kit around that snare and the song around that snare. So, you know, all these things just really expand the range of the kit, right? We've got this side snare here, which I wouldn't necessarily use as like a main snare, but it's really cool for accents, uh, or, or you can use it like I'm using in this song as like a, a sort of uh, floor tom that's to the left, right? Accent cymbals here, and we're using the regular toms, which, God, those toms just sound so good. And then the uh, the kick, we are using the, the kick without the towel. Um, with the towel, it sounds a little different, you know? Clicky. I mean, man, it sounds good with a high snare, doesn't it? And then we've also got these ones here, which have, uh, you know, wires off. Which doesn't really work for what we're doing here, but... Or, or the, the high ring, you know. It sounds like a 311 snare or something, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, when you use it in that context. It's really meant to be like sort of a jazzy thing, but hey. However you want to use it. So that's the basic setup here, right? And then this is routed out. Let's start to let's talk about some mixed stuff here, right? So if we start to look, um, I do what I always do, which is I'll route everything out here. And I'll create these little sum buses because it just makes it easier. Like, I don't necessarily want to process every channel. If I know I'm going to get all the overheads because we've got uh, two overheads channels. We've got uh, the standard, and I believe it's the Glyn's Johns. Is that Glyn's Johns? I don't know. Right, help help us out at the bottom there. I'm bad with this stuff. The the GJ, and they have it's a different technique, and it and it sounds a little different. So you can determine, uh, you know, like let's let's just listen to the, like, here if we solo this.
that's that versus. So it's just got a different sound. You could have a bit of both. I'm sort of using them strategically, and I'm using, uh, I believe, on this mix, I'm using the GJ setup more for the snare to, to, to accent more of the shells. Some of the hyper real stuff, you can't really do this in real life, but I'm using it strategically to have like an overhead that's more shell heavy and an over, and because it's got a bit more mid range to it, works out well. And then the more hi fi traditional overheads can just focus on the symbols, right? So that's sort of how that's routed out there. Uh, and then I'm going to these uh, these some some buses here, which is where all the processing is actually happening. Then we've got you know parallel compression, a little decap bus, so like a little saturation bus, which which I like to do, and a little reverb bus, which mainly the snare goes for, right? So if we look at the kick that has a whole the, <laughs> I don't know why, but I just go nuts with the kick uh, uh, plugins. It's like I'm just shaping as I go, and part of it is because you know the kick is not a very metal sounding kick, so it needs quite a bit of processing to get there. So if we sort of look at, um, let's actually solo it like this. So this is just the kick by itself here, right? It is going through like a drum bus here. And, um, you know, it's, it's very, very mid-rangey, right? So first things first, we're going to put some smash and grab on there. Because it's one of my favorite drum compressors. It's in kick mode, very easy to use. What do we have here? Some 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 uh, tape machines on fatten kick mode. We've got a transient designer. We have this twin tube. Which is just adding some some harmonics there and some top end, right? So we're just like shaping. A lot of this stuff could be done with like sort of more traditional things. And then we're getting to, to EQ. You can see how drastic this is. There's just all this gunk here, which doesn't play nice with guitars and all that stuff, right? So we're going to be cutting around 200, 250. Like it's a very boxy region, you know? And then we're, we're boosting the top end. We're doing a nice high shelf there. And now this is starting to sound a bit more recognizable to like a more metal kick, more modern kick. Then here we have just this little suite of like what I would call really smooth top end processors from Slate, right? Um, this is like a little cheat code for, uh, for more low end. BX Boom. You gotta be careful with it, but this kick is just like I've sort of cut out the low and I need I can bring it back in the way I like there and then I mean there's so many plugins on this just These are probably fine-tuning uh, plugins after I got the mix going And I just wanted it to sit a certain way in the mix, you know, so that's the processing there And then this is going out to like, you know, parallel compression uh, And to uh, like you can listen here Oh no my solo buses are playing very weird right now, so we're going to go through this strategically. But, <laughs> um, but that's that's what, how that's going through there. We can look at how everything goes through the buses later. Snare, we really don't have very much. And you kind of don't need very much. Now, I actually routed the side snare, so that's what you're hearing through there. We could go to a section that doesn't have the side snare. So really all that's going on here is compression, which again, smash and grab. It's a little cheat code for that, getting some sustain out of it. Some EQ. And now here's the other thing. I actually use the overheads um, for quite a bit of, uh, of snare sound. We'll get to that soon. We have the toms here. Actually, we can hear that. We sort of get rid of these again. Oh, I have this in snare mode for this one. Maybe I just preferred the way it sounded. Could put it in tom mode. Why not? 
Again, cutting a lot of the gunk out of there, just trying to get it sound a bit more hi-fi. And then we've got a transient designer. Just giving more attack and sustain there, right? <laughs> and then overheads. Don't know why it's not playing nice. I think it may be a routing thing. I think I actually know why why this isn't playing nice with that, but we will deal with that. I, I could solo around this. So you can hear how much is going through the, the overheads and how much we have the shells going through, right? I always, I always like the overheads because in some ways it sounds like the most, like, just like a kit that's just mic'd up, you know, that's not processed, right? So nothing. It's a cool sound, right? Then we're going to put on uh, smash and grab in overhead mode. Is that even doing anything? Let's turn it a little bit. I think I was very careful with this. So it's just reducing for snare. Just a bit more hi-fi, getting rid of the gunk, and getting rid of all this low end that we don't need, right? Because we're going to let the, the, the kick and, and snare some channels kind of do their own thing. But when you combine those... And we're going to get rid of these. It's taking shape, right? And this is kind of how I'll approach this. I'll get these shells first, then we'll worry about all that stuff later. The room will make a very big difference. And um, there's a couple of things that we've got here that are pretty useful. So if we were to just listen to the room, right? So I love smashing the room channel, right? Like, I'm just getting rid of a bit of the low end there. And then just really really hitting it hard you want it sounds compressed right and you're getting all that sustain out of it and it's it's quite loud so now we're starting to get that character sounding pretty good right and then here we've just got a little bit of top end coming from this that's all And I like those, they're very smooth plugins, so you can just add a little bit, and it doesn't really mess with things. It's a very, very easy on the ears uh, uh, top end plugin. And then, this is kind of a cool little trick. I really like this plugin. Spencer's the one who originally showed me this. I think he uses it in a different way, but I really like it this way. So, just as like a, a drum bus compressor. And I'm having it sort of ignore the kicks by doing this side chain filter, really. So it's just ducking for the snare, and you see it's not ducking very much. It's kind of doing, like, like mirroring a little bit what the master bus is doing there, right? What that's going to do is going to get rid of a little bit of the snare drum poke, right? And then here we get to some of the fun stuff to really get this cut to stuff in the... Uh, to really get this stuff to cut through in the mix. <laughs> um, because this in a vacuum sounds great. I think that sounds great right there, right? However, when, when you have guitars and all that other stuff coming through, let me try and demonstrate. Should have set this better up for muting, but. It's getting a little bit eaten up. What's happening is the sustain of these drums is kind of getting eaten up by these guitars and everything. Guitars, especially bass distortion, it's just, eating into everything. It's grinding into everything. When you have very pleasant sounds, you can use so much more of the sounds, you don't need to rely on other tools. But when you're doing metal, especially when you have distortion and a lot of distortion, it's, you'll just see how it just, you get a nice fat snare drum sound, all of a sudden it just sounds paper thin in the mix. But there are easy fixes, and this is the good news. First step, parallel compression. So your snare drum's too pokey, your drums are too pokey, you want more sustain? Well, mix in the amount of sustain that you want. So we have smash and grab again. I know, I know I have this on everything and, and it may look like I'm shilling, but I'm not. It's just literally the easiest way to get what I want. I, this plugin, I can't live without it. I did a video way back in the day where I put it on everything 
uh, just to demonstrate it. And then that became part of my template ever since. And now I just can't reach for anything else. So the parallel mode on this thing is so killer. The parallel mode on this thing for parallel compression is worth the price of admission because it replaced like a $200 uh, compressor that I used before. And I was so picky because I'm looking for something very particular, but it works so well. So parallel mode on this, and then here's what you do. Like, absolutely smash that. I mean, we're at minus 10 there, right? We're, but we're just trying to eke some sustain out of this, right? And then you mix to taste. Too little. And what I have going to this is mainly kick, snare, toms, tiny bit of overhead, and actually a fair bit of room, but only because my room sound, my room sound doesn't have like very much cymbals. If it did, it might be, you don't want too many cymbals going into the parallel compression, right? The next thing that we have is decapitator. It's a little trick I've been doing, and you can't really hear this. I'm not using too much of this. Just, it's just a saturation channel, and it's adding a little bit of fatness, right? We're just blending in some fatness. And finally, I like this. I like this uh, snare reverb, and it's really just for the snare reverb. Um, QL spaces. I've been using this one forever. This is the preset here. Um, I just like. I like what it does. Nolly was the one to show me this trick where you could have a reverb. It's not a reverb that you hear. What it does is it just helps like the, the reverb sort of bloom through the mix, right? On the hits. So. You hear like on those hits, like not the, the, the fills, but on the hits, the snare sort of disappears into the mix. This helps it have this sort of tail that just like gives it presence and it helps it sit really well. So I always do that. So that's the drums right there. The guitars are pretty well covered. I mean, what do I have on guitar? I have an EQ. I mean, be quiet out there. It's just taming it for the mix. I adjusted this for the mix. Um, and like... I just want everything to sit and everything to bind together, right? And then uh, we can get to... We've been listening to this riff a lot. Let's just listen to a different riff. So here we've got, you know what, let's, let's, let's take a look at, uh, we've got some extra guitars here, They're using the same cabs, different cabs for that one. And the lead, I believe, is Axe FX into Neural. With, uh, good buddy, uh, Pliny, but we disable the cab, and of course, we're going into Cali. Um, so you got a mix of like real amps and fake amps. Um, I guess the only thing left to look at now is the master bus. So let's see what craziness we've got on here. Let's disable everything and add it back in. Start from here. So first things first, it's a basic EQ. This is like very basic Nolly mixing 101, you know, uh, uh, top down mixing. So we're just gonna mix into basically what we're expecting every source tone to need, which is a little bit of low end, cut a little bit of mids and a little bit of top end shelf there, but no, no drastic moves there, right? Next compressor I can't really seem to get away from the VBC FG Gray from Slate. And this is because you can sidechain, it just sounds really good. It's an SSL with a with a sidechain. I could probably run this a little hard, hotter. Mm -hmm. 
but really just depends on what I'm aiming for. But the goal with this is to just get the the snare to duck the mix. You know, it's kind of an effect. So it, it makes the mix pump in a way that I like. I've gone gone over this many times. Here I've got a mid side thing going on, where we're basically just cutting low end from the sides. This is a handy thing with with Pro Q2, Fab Filter Pro Q2, Pro Q3, which is my go to EQ. Very clinical, but very easy and clean to use uh, EQ. I use it for most most things, anything surgical or anything nerdy like this, where you know I want. I want the, uh, the, the sides do not need low end. And what effectively happens is that this should sound a little bit wider. It's subtle, but all these little bits help, right? Next, we've got another EQ, which is Nolly's weird left, right. Like, again, this is like a stereo EQ to just kind of make each side a little bit different so not completely equal. I don't know why, but I think it gives it a lot of life. I always just leave that on. Uh, that's been on there for years. <laughs> Another mid-side EQ, which is probably redundant. Uh, and then Pro-L. And I like Pro-L over Pro-L too. Around minus 12-ish there, cool. And that just gives us the volume back. So that's a, a basic overview of how I've set up this kit, you know, and you can you can see. Here, that's interesting. For like this sort of accent snare, I just went, went for the center. It's fun to look at. How good is that tone? No. It's such a great sounding kit. Like, I just, I wish, I wish there was more of these tones. I'm gonna have to integrate this kit into my Franken kit for sure because that snare, snare's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. These toms, maybe there's a way to integrate them. We'll have to get clever. I'll figure it out and I'll make a new video on that. But, uh, yeah, this is a basic little overview of this little project. I'm sure you've heard it enough times now. <laughs> you know, it's all, all the gent. I, I, I have this part here that's deleted. We'll do a little bonus bit at the end here. So I thought it would be fun to, like, have this. This is the kind of stuff you can do. Okay, more on the writing side, which you guys all know how to do anyways, but more on the writing side. Take that first rhythm and just really mess with the backbeat because we've had a backbeat the whole time. If we don't have the backbeat and we kind of just play with the accents, you can really, like, get dizzy with it, right? So check this out. get the idea it's kind of fun so uh yeah that that is this awesome new benny greb signature library kit in the context of something like special defects or frederick dordendal or mushiga or all my favorite things in the world this was a lot of fun to work on for that reason uh so thank you if you made it this far it's a really long video thank you for watching thanks for hanging out with me and i will catch you very soon with more of these till next time